What is water quality? Quality is a relative term. You may ask, how do we measure the quality of water around us? Well, some of this requires stuff done in a lab, but you can do some basic stuff on your own to get some rudimentary data to start analyzing the quality of water. Much like we test water for its chemical properties, but of course the simplest thing that we can do without doing any test at all is what can we do? How can we see chemical properties? Yeah, but so we can look at water and the we already color, get yeah right. So smell. correct color smell. What else? Taste tasting. Don't taste it. Don't taste it. Yeah, okay. So, but normally if you know it is a drinking water source, do you know in France there are people that are employed just to taste the water? And only when they say the water is fine is the water supplied to the entire city. So, they taste it and what is bad? No. So, they, the, once yeah. the water comes to for them to taste, they already know that the water is of potable water quality. So, even though it goes through all the chemical tests, the bacteriological tests, it gets filtered. But finally, the person tasting it tastes it and then says if it's ready for supply or not. So, that besides here, let's look at these two. So, then the taste is actually checked. Is actually checked. Then there's somebody who decides that this water yeah. is good enough for everybody else. And if it's it. not, then it goes back through the processes. Yeah. So, you have to change something else so that the taste is just right. But then oh. sometimes you have a salty taste because of the dissolved. Uh, yeah, so, but that's up to the taster to decide. He decides what he thinks is the good taste. Oh, he so, it's yeah, yeah. so there are actually water tasters. tasters and it's a paid job and like yeah. we have the water supply board in each city they, in their cities they have this water taster okay so now coming to this what do you think when we look at both of these colors do you think there's anything different yeah. it's more color yeah it's right so it's milky so it automatically looks like it's not fit for drinking, drinking. So it requires some kind of filtration to remove the milkiness from it. Whereas this, assuming that we tested this water for bacteria, for chemical properties, if all of that came out fine, but if it still looks milky, that means there is still some treatment that is left. Whereas this water is colourless and so it is more portable for sure, subject to the other test. What else can we check out as physical properties? We saw the colour. Boiling point. Yeah, boiling point, but that is, is not required for figuring out if the water is drinkable or not. Water? Yeah, we can test for smell. So, do you want to see if there is any difference in smell in both of these samples? Water smell. Of that smells mm -hmm. kind of. What does it smell like? Does it smell of anything? It smells, it smells like, like minerals. minerals. Yeah. yeah. So, so these, these tests. Like no, normally you would get, uh, especially if you are getting water from a city supply, sometimes there can be a smell of chlorine in it. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. people, yeah, people yeah. add chlorine in addition to, to make sure that the water is free of bacteria. Sometimes if it is coming from close to a sewage kind of source, there can be the smell of sewage in it as well. So, in this case, there is no very distinct smell, yeah. but yeah, simply because this looks, so we would be testing for colour, we would check out the smell. Uh, we can't check out the taste because we are not really tasting the water. This milkiness is also referred to as sometimes the water may appear brown. But sometimes it's just a milky white. That milky white is referred to as turbidity. 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 Okay. So we measure turbidity as well. It's also good to record the temperature at which you collected the water. Because at different temperatures it may show more turbidity or less turbidity. So you can just put a thermometer inside and check the temperature of water. So, what also. exactly is turbidity? Turbidity is the presence of those salts which are dissolved in water and add a, normally it indicates the presence of carbonates in water. So, there is a milky white color too. So, when we say color less, uh, I mean we could say in color you could say milky and in turbidity you could again say that it is turbid. It is of course a much more detailed test when done in a lab and the units of measurement are different as well. Okay. So, but when as to, when in school we say, we would just say this colourless, this seems to have some contamination in it. You could say it's milky, you can say it's turbid as well. Okay. So, sometimes when the water has particles in it, a good way to purify water is just that you leave it standing in a place for some time. So what happens? Anybody? The heavier particles, so the heavier particles naturally settle down. settle down. Yep. 
and so you just have to leave it there for some time and then the heavier particles settle down and you would see a significant improvement can you look here yeah, you can already see some of the heavier particles settle down but however not all of the particles will settle down okay. some of them that are uh, suspended you can coagulate them do you, do you know what that is or how what are the particles you can pick up like that so uh, sometimes in well water coagulate means it will just bring together is all these alum? dissolved yes using alum. alum alum so in especially in well water during the rainy season if it's an open well that's about 20 30 feet deep because it's raining there is a lot of other stuff salts that are dissolving in the water as well so the water turns a little turbid yeah so it, it has color it's not crystal clear like the other water that we saw like the rain water that we had so then you can add some alum which serves as a coagulant and which attracts all of these other particles to it and the water gets filtered so here if you just keep looking if you remember it's actually even the smaller particles are slowly settling down and the water on top is getting clearer Clear. as we just let it stand so it's a simple process it's called sedimentation, sedimentation. how long do you have to let it stand well, it depends upon the particles that yeah, exactly. so it depends upon however long you're able to stand so one way is to leave it overnight so once you you waited long enough and you get a feel that a lot of the particles have settled down you can do what is called decantation yeah. so automatically now you want to try that aparajita yeah. slowly without disturbing it too much you just pour out the water from on top into this beaker once the water has been standing for a while so the solids have naturally settled to the bottom then you can slowly pour out the water from on top into a cleaner container that process is known as decantation it gets a little trickier as you go further down yeah. so is there a significant difference in the yeah, color of both of these that yeah there are sediments here that you can see very easily of course there still seems to be this doesn't seem all that crystal clear there's still some stuff dissolved in it the next thing that you could do to further filter it finely would be to actually pass it through a filter yeah that can in this case there is some filter paper or you could also just simply put a, a clean cloth a clean muslin white linen cloth, cloth. I'm sorry muslin. Muslin. muslin yeah muslin cloth that would also can you just place it here yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you have a bed of sand which is always kept submerged in water and when you pass water through it, you can do this experiment yourself and try it out, the water will be a lot, lot less turbid. So simple experiments, even if you take soap water say for instance and just pass it through several layers of sand, the output water would be significantly cleaner. Actually if you looked up two beakers like this, you would be able to see the difference in colour and hence in quality. Can you see now compared yeah, to your decantation yeah. right and sedimentation can you see the difference that filtration has made? Yes. Yeah. The only thing is it takes a lot longer than sedimentation and decantation did but it's worth it to remove those contaminants yeah. from the water. So today we tested for the pH of water. These are two samples we got. What water is this? Where did we get this from? Rainwater. This is the harvested rainwater and this is water that we got from our own well. So what we are going to test for today is the pH of water. What do you think is the pH of drinking water? Can you tell me? 6.5 to 7. Yeah, around that range. Around 7 is drinking water. If the pH of water is much lower, then the water is acidic. And, if, and how low does it go? Do you know what is the pH of water at the lowest? So the range is from? 0 to, 0, to 7. 0 to 7 is acidic and 7 to 14 is basic. And if we got sea water, what would be the uh, pH of sea water? It would be more alkaline. So here's what we do now. Each of you take a pH strip, the two of you. One of you put it in rain water, one in borewell water. We'll compare it against this color strip. Yeah? And
and then we will know that water is acidic or basic. The redder it is, the more acidic it is, the bluer it is, the more alkaline it is. Yeah? Yeah. So you take one strip here. Don't pull it out now. Let's compare it with this strip here. Do you want to see that? What color do you think this is? So this can be drinking water. Yeah. And it's rain water. Rain water typically has more salts in it. It's almost like distilled water. Can we compare it with the other steps? Sometimes it helps to compare. Yeah, so it's very good. Our borewell water yeah. is also close to your drinking water. Maybe it's a little alkaline, but nothing really worrisome. So because if you see it, it's it's, it's eight. yeah, it's between seven and eight. If you compare it with these two colours, it's between seven and eight. So even our borewell water, as far as pH goes, is good enough for drinking. Yeah. Yeah, so here are some pH strips that we tested prior to coming into the lab. Some of the children got water samples from home and we tested it. So here you can see this water when it's slightly acidic. It has a pH of 5. This is another water sample again which is neutral much like the one that we tested in school. And this sample again here in which it's turned slightly blue. So this was slightly alkaline. Do you put it in cold drinks up? Do you think they're acidic or alkaline when we drink soft drinks? Acidic. 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 How acid do you think they are? What would be their Carbonic acid. Yeah, that's what is there. Carbonic acid. And how, what do you think the pH could be? Is it closer Six. to drinking water or much more acidic? Six. Yeah, they say somewhere between 2 and 4. That's what's fair. So, what we are going to do today is to see how much of solids, whether dissolved or undissolved, is there in a water sample? Okay, and the unit for measuring it is going to be milligrams per liter. So, what will it be? Milligrams of what are we going to find out? The solids. Yeah. So, what is the weight of the solid in milligrams in the water in one liter of water? That's how we are going to find it out. But because we are not going to be measuring it for a whole liter of water, here's what we'll do in the lab. We'll take this beaker, yeah, and we will first take the weight of this particular beaker. Let's say we call it X. Why do you think this is important? Because later on when we measure it with the salt, we need to know how much salt was there in the beaker. So we first find out the weight of the beaker and we write that down and we call that X. Okay? Yeah. And then we fill this beaker. Which two samples do you think we find salt in? Is it borewell water or rain water? Borewell bore well. bore well. bore well water. Right. So let's fill this beaker with borewell water. For a hundred ml. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 So then we we need to weigh this again because that's when we know what is the weight of the water itself. And we light up the So what we do now is that. wait for this entire 100 ml of water to evaporate. So we'll take a while, let's wait through it. So yeah, it did take a very long time to boil, didn't it? Yeah. Maybe if we had a Bunsen burner, it might have worked a little faster. But at the end of it, what do we see? You can see these fine salt deposits over here. Yeah. So what we would do now is turn off the burner and then uh, remove this beaker and notice the soil deposits that are there yeah, inside this beaker. Now, if we were to weigh this again, we, what would we be weighing? What would the weight be equal to? The weight of the beaker Minus plus the weight of the salt then. Yeah, so we, remember we call the weight of the beaker x. x. So, what, let's say we call this y. y then y minus x would give me so the weight of the salt 
in milligrams, right? And that would be the salt that I found in 100 ml of water. Now we would need to find out if he had 1000 ml of water, but 1000 ml is one liter, one liter of water. How many grams of solid am I able to find in one liter of water? You would all be able to calculate and figure it out yourselves? Yep. Yeah. So that's it. Good. It's a tricky experiment because in cases where there is very little salt in water, the volumes that you have to measure, the weight that you would have to measure would be really less. And sometimes there would almost be close to nothing left around in it at all. So you would need a balance that's able to measure these small units of weight in milligrams and there needs to be at least the amount of salt in milligrams that can be measured. So here we have borewell water and rain water and in another school you may be getting water from an open well or maybe from their municipal supply. There are various places we can get water from. Sometimes when water has bacteria in it, especially disease causing bacteria. Anybody knows what they are called? Those that Bacto cause disease. Uh, right. Bacto pathogens. Bacto pathogens. Bacto pathogens. That disease causing bacteria. So when they are there in the water then you get like a runny stomach. You, you fall ill because they are disease causing bacteria. And where do they come from? What is it normally found in? Air, water. No, in water. We are going to be testing water here. So, what it, it normally comes dirty from feces, water. dirty water. So, if people are um, excreting yeah, out in places, yeah, co yeah, coliform, E. coli bacteria, all of that comes into the water if there is feces close to drinking water. So, it's important to check that water does not have any pathogens in it. So, this is a simple way which we can test. This is a vial, it's called an H2S strip test and uh, it's very useful especially in places where there is flooding or there is drought and so there is a lack of drinking water. Even in a place where there is flood, there is a lot of water available but you are not really very sure if you can drink that water or not. So this is a simple test that can be performed to check if the water is portable or not. You want to read out the instructions here? Yeah. It's a simple test and normally the bottle comes with the instructions written on it. Just read it out aloud for everybody to hear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, procedure. Hmm? Fill aqua check vial with sample water directly from the source. Fill aroma. Hmm. There's an aroma. Yeah. Close the lid tightly and shake gently. Keep the vial at room temperature 25 degrees centigrade to 44 degrees centigrade hmm? for 24 to 48 hours and away from direct sunlight. If the water turns black within this time, it is not fit for drinking. It indicates the presence of Salmonella, Chytobacter, Coliform bacteria or pathogens. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, so we'll do this test now. Let's fill. Do you think we'll find bacteriological contamination in borewell water? Some might. 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 Some. Yeah, typically Some might. no, because the water comes from very deep inside the ground and there are close to very few or no no disease causing bacteria. Do you think we'll find more in there is a likelihood, depends if the rooftop has been kept clean or not. Yeah, more than rainwater, normally you find disease causing bacteria in surface water, yeah. like a lake water, a river water, that's why, and stagnant water. in stagnant water. water. But normally we are not picking up stagnant water for drinking. So, here, why don't you pour? There is a fill line here, you just pour it till here. That's enough. Yeah. Now we close this bottle tightly and then leave it out over here for about 24 to 48 hours if there is bacteria in the water this this bottle this water will actually turn a very blackish color otherwise so, it kind of h2s over here helps it determine that yes that's right so it's a paper strip that's coated with h2s and which allows for that water to change color will Why the water H2S? change yeah well, that's not that's they figured it out chemically that's that's the substance which changes so earlier it was a problem there was no technology to easily figure out if water has bacteria in it or not so i think in 1992 this was developed by a person named manja in from mysore so oh. all across the world it's a very famous test developed by this person called manja and uh, he's written papers about it and that's now it's used widely across the world to test for so will the water change color even though there's no bacteria <laughs> No, no, it will just stay, turn. Okay, so here since we already have a bottle that one of us tested, it's yeah, so it it kind of stays this kind of a color. Okay. If there is no bacteria, oh. yeah. So it's you may think it's changed color, but this indicates yeah, that there's still no bacteria in it. 
it's a lightish yellowish yeah. kind of color but when there is bacteria it actually turns a very deep dark black you can't miss it and then you know there's bacteria Let's say we did the H2S2 test and if the water turns black, what does that mean? It has bacteria. bacteria. It has bacteria. Yeah. Now the thing is how do you remove that bacteria? Because you need that out before it's ready for drinking. So what are some of the ways you can disinfect the water? You, boil it. you can boil it. That will kill the bacteria. You can add it. So there's something. Yeah, you could pass it through a commercially available water purifier that passes ultraviolet rays through it. But there's something that's really simple which uses the sunlight to treat the water. It's called solar disinfection. So it's SODIS for short. And the way you go about doing that is you take a bottle of water, a pet bottle of water, and then you fill it about 70% with the volume of water that you want in it. Yeah, the water that you're going to be treating. Then you just close it tightly and you shake it for a while till the oxygen that was there in this part is mixed up with the remaining water. So you mix it up for a while and then you fill it up Right, fill the top with the remaining water. So this is much of the water that we still want to purify. So fill it fill the very top with this water. And then you tightly cap it again. And it's as simple as you just leave it out in the sun for a period of 6 to 8 hours in a place where there is bright sun. So the ultraviolet rays of the sun as well as the heat it gets from the surface will kill the bacteria and then how do you know if it's killed the bacteria the next morning let's say is the water ready for drinking how do you think you can figure out do the same test again yeah, you can repeat the h2s drip test okay. and then you can if the water is clean enough because you've already tested it for all other parameters except for bacterial contamination it's ready